I love how this year, the 1st of February, the 1st of March, and the 1st of April have all been Mondays. So I'm continuing on with the series and I am finishing the Reanimator series today. So far, I have watched Reanimator and I loved it. It's so good. I love Herbert West. I love a troubled scientific prodigy. So of course I was gonna like Reanimator. I watched Bride of Reanimator, which I enjoyed, just not as much as Reanimator. And that leads us on to Beyond Reanimator, which came out in 2003. So I am hoping that there isn't some dodgy CGI in this because Oh boy, was it questionable in 2003. I would suggest though, if you haven't watched my reviews for Reanimator and Bride of Reanimator, maybe go and watch the two of those first because while I intend on keeping this spoiler free for Beyond Reanimator, I can't guarantee that there is not gonna be spoilers for the first two movies in the series. But if you don't know anything about Beyond Reanimator from 2003, let me quickly fill you in. When he was young, Howard Phillips watched his sister get torn apart by one of Dr. Herbert West's reanimated corpses. Philip, now a doctor, is so eager to learn more about the mad doctor's attempts to bring back the dead that he accepts a position at a prison where West is being held on death row. If you're new here, I go by Hordes and I talk about all things horror here on my channel on Mondays and Fridays. But as always, when it comes to movies that I have never seen before, I am now gonna go and watch Beyond Reanimator from 2003 off camera. So that way, if you too wanna watch this movie, nothing will be sport for you because nobody wants to watch a movie you've just watched somebody else watch from start to finish. I got a new body. You know that you're back in the Reanimator series when you hear that familiar piece of music and you know that Herbert West is gonna turn up at some point and cause chaos. And I am interested in chaos. And I love that Herbert West is in fact causing chaos, even on death row. But the plot of this movie, I thought actually takes a little bit longer to get on its feet. And when it does, there's this strange juxtaposition going on. Like any scene with Herbert West in it is played incredibly seriously and Everybody else that's in the prison, whether that be the guards or the inmates or whoever they are, there's this weird like comedic undertone going on. And I'm not exactly sure how I feel about this. I, I don't know if I like this or not. I like that Herbert West has actually been using his time in prison to progress the scientific formula behind his reanimating agent. Like Herbert West is not a stupid man in any definition and he has this habit in the first two movies of repeating the same thing over and over again and expecting there to be a slightly different result, which doesn't happen. So you see in the very beginning of Beyond Reanimator, when, uh, when the rat turns up and what happens with that, that Herbert has actually been using his time wisely in this. Um, you see more of this when you know that the second step now comes into it like you insert the reanimating agent into a dead person or a dead rat or a dead cat or a dead dog insert all of the things that Herbert tries to use it on throughout the series um and what happens is they normally turn into like mindless zombies that try and kill everybody that they come in contact with so knowing that there is now this extra step is a good thing and you see this more when uh, when the thing happens with Laura the journalist, which I can't speak of right now, but I will talk a little bit more about her in a minute. And it reminds me of another movie that came out in 2003. And that is the Scooby-Doo movie starring Matthew Lillard. There is a part in this with Laura and another character that reminds me of in the Scooby-Doo movie when the ectoplasmic heads of Velma, Daphne and Fred are trying to find their way back to their body and Fred ends up in Daphne's body. So it's Daphne's body being controlled by Fred. Like that is all I could imagine once I saw this scene in Beyond Reanimator. It's, uh, it's quite, quite similar. But I'm not Daphne. Fred? Laura the journalist is the definition of a character that should have a billboard sized neon sign behind them that says, do not trust me, I will betray you. And you spend the entire time waiting for the betrayal to happen just so you can say, see, I told you so. Um, her accent comes and goes and it really started to annoy me, like so much so. 
Um, didn't care either what happened to her, if I'm being all honest. Like, the twist was cool, but I still didn't care what happened to her at the end of the movie. There is one part where she has to get on all fours and bark like a dog, and I was instantly transported back to 2001 when Trish Stratus in WWE had to do the exact same thing. So we know where that plot point came from. Her skinny chokers and wedged slip-on shoes may be peak 2003, but I cannot forgive that accent. I can't. I can't. It's, ugh. It's horrible. It's such a horrible accent. <laughs> so let's talk about the things that I actually found really annoying or were just eh or just meh. The big thing for me is I noticed some audio dubbing in this and it is a pet peeve of mine when clearly the actors' mouths are saying one thing and in post they have changed it to be a different piece of dialogue but it does not resemble remotely what the actor is actually saying. Like, yeah, I spotted a few scenes where this was going on. The recycling of scenery just became a joke for me. Um, I get that this had got a lower budget but when you're noticing the same piece of scenery being passed off as a different room in the prison it's like, yes we're in a completely different part of the prison now, shh, don't say anything, no, no, we don't, we don't need to mention that, no. You didn't see nothing, scatter! While the practical effects are mostly decent, they do feel like they have lost that mad scientist feel to them and they're kind of underwhelming by comparison, like they're not bad, they're just not as good as they've previously been. The CGI though, like, do we really need to talk about the legless man flying through the air towards the end of the movie because that's a choice? And hell no, did I need a repeat of the Dr. Hill sexual assault scene from the original reanimator twice more in this? Like, I didn't need it, it wasn't needed, why was it like, when the guy and the nurse have their moment and then the warden and Laura the journalist have their moment. I can understand that a little bit more. But the nurse scene, I didn't need that. Why was that there? Jeffrey Combs as Herbert West is the definition though of an actor that knows his character inside and out. And I am always gonna want more Herbert West and this was just more of the same good old Herbert West. And especially now that I've seen how this wraps up. I would like to think that Herbert West is out there somewhere in a loving asexual relationship with a nice man living in a fancy house somewhere that has its own science lab in the basement. Like, that's what I want for my boy. I want him to just, you know, have a happy good life out there and be left alone to do his weird experiments without interruption and no more people turning into zombies. Like, that's my, that's my dream for Herbert West. Like, that's my boy and I want him to be happy. Wish you the best in Mexico. Oh, and Howard, AKA Dan 0.5, because he's certainly not Dan 2.5. Um, he's fine, I guess, he's there. He's basically got Dan's storyline from Bride of Reanimator, but with a different woman and minus the build bride part. Like, he's there, he's fine. Am I gonna remember him down the line though? Probably not. Like, who's who do you remember in this movie besides Herbert West? This is the weakest of the three reanimator movies and I don't think that many people would disagree with me on this. Like, it's fine. Like, it's not great. It's not meh. It's just very middle. And I think that's why I am actually going to give Beyond Reanimator from 2003 a 3 out of 5 stars because while I am always going to want more Herbert West, do I think that the wait between Bride of Reanimator and this one was worth it? I'm going to say no and I do think that considering people waited like 13, 14 years for this, I would have liked something that was a little bit stronger and at least on par with Bride of Reanimator. Somewhere along the way, it feels like this movie lost the thing that makes Reanimator and to a certain extent Bride of Reanimator feel so special when you watch it. And this one even has less Herbert West screen time and yeah, that's a no from me. 
So there you have it, my initial thoughts and my review for my first time watching Beyond Reanimator from 2003. If you've also seen this movie, I would love to know what your thoughts and opinions are down in the comments section down below. Like, where would you rank this in the Reanimator trilogy slash series, whatever you want to call it. If you would like to know every single horror movie I watch, not just the ones I talk about here on YouTube, you can also find me over on Instagram and on Letterboxd at Hordes of Horror. And I will be back on Friday with another one in my Second Chance rewatch series. And this time, we're gonna go and get spaced in a field in Ireland because we're watching Shrooms from 2007. So until next time, and bye. <laughs>